Good morning, CEOs. Happy Monday. It is definitely a Monday. While everyone else is slowly coming in, let's go ahead and um, open up the chat. We are going to put in the chat our wins. What are we celebrating this week? What did we what did we accomplish in business or life? Um, we've been talking a lot about marketing. We've been talking about AI. We've been talking about a whole lot of things over the past couple of weeks. How are you um, putting that into action? What are the results that you're getting? Um, go ahead and let's celebrate some wins. Um, we are also going to um, have an amazing guest today. I'm excited about that. Uh, but before we get started, I'm going to let Paula go ahead and open us up with our housekeeping items. Good morning, CEOs. It is Monday, May 1st. I said March 1st and I had to correct myself. It's May 1st. Oh my God, five months, four months, where has it gone? Anyways, great Monday to be here, May 1st. Put in the chat as well. Last week we talked about, Jen gave us a ninja strategy to increase our referrals immediately. And it was to make that list of 25 of your closest referral partners or people you want to be your referral partners reach out to them, send them the script that was appropriate for who they are and get a referral, ask for the referral. So in the chat, we would love to see how many referrals you've gotten in the last seven days from that ninja strategy that Jen gave us last week. So throw that in with your celebrations as well. As always, we have some content and we actually have a special so guest this morning that's going to give us cutting edge content in marketing. And so we are really excited about that. So everyone has already put their um, mics on mute. Thank you very much. And as always, get that notebook and pen out because she's going to bring some fire content today that you're going to write down, that you're going to want to write down. And last but not least, this is a vault environment. What does that mean? Of course, what it means is everything that happens in CEO Monday stays CEO Mondays, especially when we go to our laser coaching portion that is not recorded. Everything that happens here stays here. We want to um, always encourage and support a safe environment for you to be vulnerable and get past your challenges and sticking points in your business. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it to Jen to introduce our special guest and content giver this morning. Back to you, Jen. Absolutely. I am enjoying the celebrations. Please put your chat to everyone so everyone has the um, the benefit of your celebrations and also your questions. If you're asking questions, if you go to the chat and just click that and put to everyone in meeting, that would be really, really super fantastic because while I love you sending all of your celebrations directly to me, no one else gets to see those. Um, so uh, go ahead and put your chat to everyone so everyone gets the benefit of that. And I am exceptionally excited today because many of you have met her already. You know that we do business together. We invest together. But Eva is an AI. Uh, she is truly an uh, AI and marketing strategist who is a specialist in LinkedIn. She's one of the top 1% of marketing professionals on LinkedIn, which is saying a whole lot in case you have, uh, haven't have noticed. She is also um, one of the top 100 global women entrepreneurs of 2023. She's had over a million in online sales. She truly has been leveraging AI, the power of AI to maximize marketing, especially in LinkedIn. Um, she is absolutely amazing at what she does and has agreed to come in and do a little bit of a presentation for us um, specifically because we've been talking about marketing for the last five to six weeks and she really is the guru. She's my go-to resource. Um, so without further ado, Aoife Roach, take it away. Thank you very much for that introduction, Jen. And I want to say hello to everyone. It's great to see so many of you here on a Monday morning. So as Jen mentioned, my name is Aoife Roach. I run a marketing agency in Los Angeles called Attention Grabbers Marketing Agency. And the core mission of my business, my company, um, and everything that I do is to help people grab attention for their business, to help them generate more revenue and more sales. So what Jen and I have been doing a lot of work um, recently, especially I do a lot on the marketing front and I've been doing the marketing front for the last couple of years. But what we've really seen over the last six months, the change that's happening in 
the not only the marketing space, but in the business space in relation to AI. So Jen and I have been doing um, a lot of work looking at AI integrations and how people can leverage AI in their business to be able to grow and scale. And um, I have currently, I know I have some of you here who are on it. I have a LinkedIn program that I'm currently running, which is basically teaching people how to leverage LinkedIn and AI together and create that ecosystem. But, so what I wanted to, cause I, you know, I don't know the level that everyone's at, so I don't wanna make any assumptions, but I wanted to give you a overview of first of all, what we look at when we're defining a marketing strategy. I'm just going to put up a one slide deck. And I'm also then going to talk over the points that you now need to be aware of, of things that you can use from an AI perspective that is going to help you to polish up these points so that you can save yourself time, energy, and money, which is really what this is about. I did, um, for any of you who are interested, I did an article on LinkedIn yesterday talking about AI and the impact of AI and how there's a lot of fear around the fact that AI is going to make people lose their jobs and that it's going to get, um, you know, that we're going to lose the humanization kind of element. Now, what I say to people is AI is not going to replace you, but someone who knows how to leverage AI is going to replace you. So your work as a CEO right now in all aspects of your business is to get educated and informed of the technologies that are available to you so that you can start to integrate these technologies into your business. And I'm just gonna give you a couple of working examples because I think this is really, really important when people talk to me about the impact of AI. So I have a, a content creation team, a team of videographers who work with me they come around and they film the content for me and we often do podcasts for different people and stuff there is a new ai technology which is now taken the editing of a podcast which would normally take four hours of a multi-camera which now does it in four minutes now that is, you look at that from a videographer's perspective, they can look at that as a big challenge because then what the, anyone who's doing, anyone is any way tech savvy with Premiere Pro could now just run that program and they no longer need to pay an editor. What I spoke to my videographer team about, I said, you now need to position that as a USP to your clients that you can edit faster than everybody else. And this is the way I want you to start to think about it. Rather than fearing AI, we wanna look at AI in a way, how can I integrate this into my business to make my business better, faster, and more efficient so that then I can be to the front of the market to position myself as the expert authority when it comes to AI. So what I'm just gonna open up a slide here for you so that you can all see that. So can you just confirm to me that you all see that? We see it. Okay, perfect. So the, here are the things that I look at when I'm mapping out a strategy for anyone that comes into the business. And I know Jen has probably spoken at length about all of these different um, areas, but I think it's also worth, if you want to screenshot it, take a picture of it, or I can send it over to Jen. I think it's very, very important that we do have a sequential process when we are looking at how we're going to map out the strategy. And the first thing is about defining your target audience and your unique messaging. When you market to everyone, you market to no one, right? The riches are absolutely in the niches when it comes to identifying who you are going to sell your products and services to. Because when you're defining your target audience, it's not just about defining your target audience. You wanna be defining the problems that you solve better than anybody else. And then that helps you to craft that unique messaging that speaks to people for a problem that they have. If I look at one part of my business that's getting me a lot of attention at the moment is the fact that I am helping people put together tech stacks of AIs to help them to optimize their business processing. So that is making me 
a little bit more unique than someone who says, I'm just going to sell you marketing. I'm going to sell you marketing services. I'm like, I'm going to give you a marketing services solution and I'm going to make sure that we have an AI infused solution so that we are able to reduce the costs on the back end so that you can get not only a better product or service on the front end, but also a product or service that is probably more competitively priced because we're lot, we're leveraging the power of AI. So that lends into step two. Once you've identified not only your target audience and your avatar, you're identifying your USP and your offers. So your USP is what makes you different to everybody else. Why are you better than the competition? And what are people, what's the intrinsic value that people are going to get from being able to work with you? People buy from people who they know, who they like, and who they trust. So you have to figure out what is it about you that makes you stand out over your competition? You might be excellent at networking. You might be excellent at relationship building. You might be excellent at sales. You might have tech skills that nobody else has. You might have expertise that nobody else has or that expertise that you've positioned in a slightly different way. And then you look at crafting your offers. I recommend that everyone have three tiers of offers. So you want you can have your like your freemium version, which is you know, it doesn't even have to be freemium, but you can have a freemium version, which is your offer to have a book a call with you. You want a lower ticket offer where basically the idea behind the lower ticket offer is you just want someone to say yes to you at least once so that you can knock their socks off with so much value that they automatically want to come in into your ecosystem and buy more products and services from you because they realize if, you, if for the lower value that they can get something so, um, so like business savvy at that lower ticket that they're definitely inclined to want to get the higher ticket. Now, the, I'm just going to make sure we have no questions there because I can't see my screen. Does anyone have any questions or anything they want me to answer? Will you do that afterwards, Jen? We do questions and answers at the end. So why don't we go Perfect. through everything first? Perfect. Okay, just so I know. So the next one is personal branding and storytelling. And Jen gave me a very, very um, a brilliant introduction, but there is a lot of time, effort, um, and attention that's gone into my personal branding and the storytelling from featured mag in press, in magazines to, you know, branding, getting, um, getting into the top 1% on LinkedIn to all of the credibility that I have as an athlete. All of these things tie into my personal brand, which innately ties into my business brand. So the values that, and I always say that when you, especially when you're in sports or any type of sports, like, you know, you have dedication, you have discipline, you have consistency, you have work ethic, you have hard work. All of these are the kind of things that I try to showcase in my personal brand, because I know it's a direct reflection of my, of my business brand. Sometimes as the CEO or the owner of the business, there can be a hesitation about bringing yourself and putting yourself forward on social media. Whatever about the other social media channels, for certain, everybody should be doing some level of personal branding and video marketing and storytelling on their LinkedIn profiles. You are a business owner and that is the biggest business network in the world. There are over 700 million people on that platform who are on there with the core objective to network. So that platform for me is an absolute essential for anyone who is running a business. So if you are not already leveraging LinkedIn as a platform, I strongly encourage you and recommend to you that you start to do that because you were leaving money on the table by not being on there. The next thing that we look at is identifying the marketing mix. And this is where I'm not the type of person who likes to oversell people in the beginning. There are certain channels that leverage better to certain businesses. And there's absolutely no doubt about that. Some channels 
are like fitness and you know sometimes the e-com stuff they're they're very good channels for like instagram and tiktok even coaching services you could probably say is very much leveraged to those channels but however looking at if you have really premium price ticket programs and you know your avatar is a business owner you are much more likely to find that business owner on linkedin rather than TikTok. Now, TikTok is evolving at a rapid rate to be the most educational platform there is, far superseding Facebook and Instagram, but the actual demographic of that, there is still a large proportion of that demographic that's under the age of 21, like it's significant, I think it's nearly 50%. Are they the people who are going to be buying your products and services? And that's what you have to ask yourself. Where do you spend your time when it comes to your social media? Um, and where does your avatar spend their time? If your avatar is spending their time on LinkedIn, I think you shouldn't be wasting so much time on other platforms like Facebook or Instagram. It's good to be omnipresent, but I would rather make sure that you have a flow running through um, each of the channels rather than a, a little trickle going through all of them because you're spreading yourself so, so thinly. Now, what we start to look at here is the evolution of the AI tech stack when you're identifying your marketing mix. With regard to AI, ChatGPT is one of the core um, AIs that really is changing the game when it comes. I think Jen will probably put the link in the chat if any of you haven't been made familiar of what it is or what it does. But what ChatGPT is doing is it is allowing you to or ask questions to an AI and an AI is providing feedback and a solutions. So each one of you here has step one, two, and three. So you could ask the AI very clearly, please help me, give me suggestions to define my target audience for X niche, let's say I'm in, you know what I mean, plumbing or HVAC or whatever it is I might be. Give me, define my target audience for this niche and give me the, you give me a unique message that I could send to them. Or I could ask the AI, write me um, a list of the USPs you see for my business based on the website. And I can feed that into um, I could feed my website address into the AI and the AI will return a value. You can ask the AI to, and this is a very, very important point, is you want to, when we're opening up these AIs, it's something that I've been talking a lot and very few people are aware that they need to be doing this. You need to open up an AI account and one of the first things you want to do on that AI account is you want to tell the AI account, who you are, what you do, what are your values, how you run your business, what's important to you, what's not important to you, and then ask the AI to ask you questions that it needs to know in order to respond back to your requ request in a language that is going to resonate with your brand. Very few people know that they need to be doing that because if you do not do that, what is going to happen is you're just getting the same answers as everybody else. And there is going to be no uniqueness in your content. Um, having ChatGPT um, is of no competitive advantage if you do not know how to use it correctly. So that's something that we're working with with teaching, um, not only in my course, but all of my clients is how to leverage the AI to maximize the potential, not only to generate content, but also generate content that speaks from a persona with the voice of the business owner to the avatar that we're actually talking to. And I know that sound, might sound like a little bit of a mouthful, but I can promise you, if you're not doing this, your competitors are, and you will be outperformed by them because they can generate more content at a faster pace than what you are able to actually do on your own. The next thing is the channel strategy. With the evolution of AIs, the scheduling of social media content on multiple channels has never been easier. There are multiple AIs out there where you can now I have I'm testing several of them at the moment, but I think I have the one that 
I, I like the most. This particular AI does, I can feed in my content into it. It cuts it up, it puts it out on TikTok, it puts it out on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn posts. It sends a few tweets on my behalf and it does all of that from a single location with a single feed of content going into it so it i can even put in a long form video which is a two minute long form video it goes in it chops up the content and then it circulates that so a long form video that might have gone on youtube now gets cut up into reels and it gets put out on the channels and it gets put out automatically so this is where the game is really changing for the business owner who before used to struggle about I'm not able to keep up with having to do the content and I can't afford to have a social media manager or I don't know how to train a social media manager. The AI evolution is now changing the way that we do content. LinkedIn has seen a 55% increase since February in the amount of content on the platform. Now, the challenge that they're now having is a lot of that is AI generated content. And this is another key point. There are things called AI detectors out there. So Microsoft has an AI, um, Google has an AI, and now LinkedIn wants to know which channel, which people are using AI completely for their content. So the idea that you can just use AI on its own is not a valid assumption. You need to integrate the AIs with other AIs, which is also something that we teach so that your content is when it goes through an AI detector, it comes up, even though it's been generated by an AI, it comes up as most likely been written by a human. You'll see that on my blog on LinkedIn. If you have a look at the, the actual cover, it says that the content was written by um, a human. Now, I will tell you it was a 50-50 between an AI and me, but I know how to ensure that I can avoid the AI detectors because what's inevitably going to happen is content that is 100% AI generated is going to be penalized on the platforms, either because it's not generated by the AI owned by that particular platform, or the fact that they feel content is going to get diluted because of the everyone having and producing the same content. And then the scheduling and the implementation. I cannot tell people enough about this. One, it is so important that you start to schedule in not only creating your content and having your content more so than ever now, because your competitors are leveraging AI. So they're on every social media platform, we have landscape. That landscape is incredibly valuable. The more that you are on the screen of somebody's phone with your business, the more attention you're going to get, the more attention you're going to get, the more sales you're going to make. So right now it's a land grab. It's a land grab for who can take up the most landscape. Now, previously, those who took up the most landscapes were those who had the most resources, dedicated content teams to actually going out and scheduling the post continuously. Now that game is changing because AI is now replacing the need for fully fledged content teams. But you must be aware that you have there is a strategy that has to be implemented when you are looking not only at developing your marketing strategy, but also developing your AI strategy. And then on top of that, myself and Jane talk about this quite a lot, your critical thinking strategy. AI on its own is of no value to the business aside from it being a tool. AI with critical thinking and a solid content strategy is the recipe to six, seven, figure eight figure businesses. And that is really where you know, the whole purpose of me coming in and try, I want to bring that awareness to you all of how much opportunity is here right now to leverage these AIs to build your personal and professional brand on platforms on LinkedIn, but also the opportunity that's there for you to get ahead of your competition and open up potentially new lines of business, which wouldn't have been available to you before so that you can create new revenue streams and generate more business. So that is, um, I'm just gonna stop the share and then I'm just gonna, um, so th thank you, Jen. And thank you, Paula, for letting me share.
Absolutely. And so we're going to open this up to questions because um, let me stop the recording. Um, no, thank you. Thank you for telling me I was off camera. I didn't realize that was an accident. 